Welcome to this brief introduction on FDO. FDO stands for Foundation Directory Online, a research tool produced by Candid, formerly known as Foundation Center. I'm Zach Huber, the Grant Specialist for the Toledo Lucas County Public Library, and I will be going over a short tutorial so that you can get started on FDO to find funders for your nonprofit work. This tutorial will explain what FDO is and help you identify your needs before you start searching so that you can find grant prospects using a project-based approach. FDO is a searchable web-based tool that lets you find funders fast so you can spend more time on building relationships with them. FDO's rich data set on U.S. and international philanthropy is unsurpassed in terms of scope. FDO has more than 220,000 funder profiles and more than 1 million recipient records. Funder types in FDO include private foundations, community foundations, public charities, corporate giving programs, foreign grant makers, and federal agencies. For the majority of funders, FDO's data comes from the 990 forms, but it also uses a variety of other sources to inform its profiles, including the foundations themselves. So let's get started. So when you access Foundation Directory Online, you'll come to this simple search box here. Here's where you can type in exactly what you're looking to get funded for. So there's three things that you can ask yourself. Who are you funding? Where are, excuse me, who are you serving? Where are they? And what are you doing for them? So my sample search is going to be arts education for students in Ohio. So who am I serving? Students. Where are they? Ohio. And what are we doing for them? An arts education program. From here, you can also keep this checked or unchecked the include U.S. federal funders, depending if you want to apply to federal grants. From there, we can hit search, and we can see the suggested search that FDO has provided here. Arts education, elementary and secondary education, ballet, curriculum development in Ohio, and for students. So we can um, see this kind of more clearly if we select edit or advanced search filters, and we can see how it broke, the, broke those out. Um, and to see the curriculum development, that is actually going to be, or once you hit additional filters here, you'll see it under curriculum development there and support strategies. So it's great that FDO does do this so that it matches it to the vocabulary in the system, but sometimes uh, we may want to edit that search a little bit to, to better align with the project that we're looking for. So in this example, let's say I am not interested in um, finding grants for ballet but we'll keep arts education and elementary and secondary education as part of that. We'll keep students. We don't always have to have someone in the population, but we will keep it here. And let's get rid of support strategy because I will accept any type of support uh, in these areas. Some of these filters we'll go over later quickly, but um, not all of the grants have this data, so it's great to do a search with them, but you may or may not find much um, along those lines because the data isn't there. So let's update this search here since we, we changed it. And then we can see our search results. Um, the search results are, are tied to each other so you can see in the blue we have 3,138 grant makers who have made 51,123 grants to 3,252 recipients. Now that is a lot of grant makers. But we aren't necessarily going to concern ourselves with all of them. We can use some of these filters up here to edit and to change so that we get a smaller, more narrow group. Um, or we can um, use some tips here when we get to the grant maker section. But to get started, I'm actually going to change some of our filters. So I'm going to change it to just the last 10 years of data. And I want to point out this um, area here with the subject. If I really wanted to limit it, I could say match all rather than match any. And so that will um, only look for grants that have been given to both of these search terms rather than just all of them. I could also change the grant amount I'm interested in. It does default from zero to 10 billion, it looks like. And so maybe I'm interested in actually just going to a $50,000 grant and it'll be easier to type that in. And then I can update my search. So we did get less, and then each of these um, areas has a breakout section below with the top five search results, but we'll focus largely on the grant makers because all the other sections come into play through that. 
So I'll click View All. And then we can see off to the side here how they're arranged. So every grant maker here is on the search results because they've given at least one grant to our search criteria. And then they're ranked by how many grants they've given to that criteria. So this is a federal funder, you can see by this little icon there, and they've given over 3,522 grants in our search criteria. From there, you can see that they go down. And that's when you're really going to want to start paying attention to how quickly they drop and where to focus your attention. Because once this number gets too low, especially in regards to the amount of years you specified, you'll know that they're probably not going to be a great match. Another thing that we can do to narrow down this 2,671 is to click Exclude Grant Makers Not Accepting Applications. You can see that drops it over by about half, maybe I can't remember exactly that first number, but it's about half. Um, sometimes if you have a dedicated fundraising staff, you don't want to click this because uh, a lot of the foundations on here will just have on their profile not accepting applications just to limit the number of applications coming in because they are maybe small one person staff. So um, it's not always great to do this, it does really limit your options, but if you don't have the time to dive into that, this will at least kind of help you uh, in your search. So from here, let's look at a profile. I'm going to look at the Columbus Foundation um, rather than a government agency right now. And we can see before we even click on it, we get some of those highlights. So once we get to the profile, we have to really examine if this funder is going to be a good fit for us. And so there are a few areas that you can look at. The first one I always recommend is just jumping down so you get to this main menu over here and then clicking on applications and RFPs so that we can see the giving limitations, which you'll find always in a gray box. So the giving limitation says it's limited to Central Ohio. So if we're outside of that, then we know this probably isn't going to be a good fit for us. It also gives um, a little bit more detail on whether they give grants to individuals or religious organizations, um, but usually you'll, you'll find that most of them will limit you based off of the location right away. So if that is a good fit for us, then we go quickly right back to the top and we look at these graphs. These graphs are going to have some data on the grants that they've given, um, particularly the subject areas that they give. So you can see that they give to education and arts and culture a lot, which is great for my search term. Um, and then we can also click on that for more detail. And if I click on education, I can see elementary and secondary education is great. So that was part of my search term as well. The other graphs will show you um, location. So you can see based off of the dark green colors throughout the map that this does um, have grants nationally, um, but let's check on Ohio, and we can see where in Ohio the grants have gone. We can see that it aligns with the fact that they give primarily to central Ohio, with the darkest green being there in Franklin County, um, but it looks like donors of theirs have given across the state. And then we check on this last graph to see the size of the grants that they're making. So if we're looking for a grant maybe in the $50,000 range like I specified in my search. I can see that they do give that number, but they don't give it a lot. They give more smaller grants, but it's not a, it's not out of the realm of possibility to get a $50,000 grant from this, this funder. So once we looked at those three graphs, the next area that we'll want to check is this grant section here, which is going to be the same um, grants that appeared in the first search result menu that we got. So we can see the most common grant that they give to our search is $5,000, which means that we, we maybe struggle to get a $50,000 grant. We can see also who's getting the grants and what they're getting them for in regards to the search criteria that we have that's carried over from our, our original search. What's great is that you can also see a little bit more detail. So if I wanted to click on this first grant here, I can see um, when the grant was made, how much it was for, and some of the categorical information. This description can um, sometimes include a lot of information on it. This one just has it was for education, but you can usually see sometimes maybe a description of the actual program that it's going for if they have that available. So that'll give you an idea of if the type of, of organization that you are is being funded by this grant maker. The other pieces on this profile 
um, that you can look at is their funding interest and you know who and where the money is going to see if that better aligns with what you're doing. Some related organizations, and you'll only see this on community foundations, so these are some of the funds that are housed at a community foundation. The about section, so their purpose and activities, a little bit of background if there is some, and then the program areas that they're funding. And then the other funders to consider, and this has nothing to do with your search, but it's rather um, related to the patterns of giving, their subject area, and geographic locations. But you can use these and, and follow up and find similar funders. So if it does look like it's going to be a good option for you, then you can check out the application RFP section to find out how to submit a grant proposal or even a letter of inquiry. And if they have any current requests for support proposals, um, like right now they have one for COVID-19, um, you'll find that here as well. And here's where you'll find the 990 forms and financial, financial data. And then we get to the who's who section. So you can use this to see if you have anyone in your network um, whether you know someone that's a staff member or on the board, or maybe you know someone that you can find out through LinkedIn, if they have the LinkedIn icon next to their name to see if you have anyone shared in your network, to really help you make that connection and start fostering a relationship with the foundation. And then here are any communications that mention or have been published by the foundation, as well as their social media channels. And then the contact information is always at the bottom of the profile. So you'll find most of those pieces on every single profile if the information is available. And if we wanted to save the profile, we could do so by clicking this icon in the corner to download a PDF or to email the PDF of the profile to you or someone else. Additionally, if we go back to the full list of results, we can save up to 10 profiles at a time by selecting the profiles that we want and then getting a PDF, and that's again only 10 at a time. Or we can do a full list and just get this information that we see here. We can do a list of up to 100 of those and we can download that as a PDF or a CSV file so that we can take that home and analyze the data. So some of the other additional things that we can search for, so we've gone over subject area, geographic focus, and the populations. But you can also use this search box organization name to find a specific funder or even a specific recipient to look at the grants that they made or received. We can also look for the location of the grant maker recipient. So if we only wanted to look for grant makers that were in perhaps our Toledo, Ohio area, we can use that to find that. And we can use the who's who section to find, um, we can find foundations that are related to people that we might know. So in this example, I might type in Bill Gates because I know he's in here and we can see um, if I click on that, it will eventually lead us to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation if I were to search for that. Support strategy, as I mentioned earlier, not all grants have this data, so you're fine to, to search without it, but you can um, look for specific types of support that a foundation or a grant maker may have. If you know that maybe you're looking to get money for a building, you want to search only for capital and infrastructure grants, you can do that. You can also narrow it down by the type of money uh, that you would like to receive or whether that would be in-kind support or a matching gift you're looking for foundations that do matches um, you can specify that here you can also specify what type of foundations you're interested in if if you are uh, we'd like to narrow that down i usually have this leave left open but if you only want to maybe look at community foundations or corporate foundations you can narrow that down in this box We've already talked about grant amount and years, but there are two more boxes that you can use. I'm going to come back to this one real quick. The EIN, and that is just if you have the tax identification number for the foundation or nonprofit that you'd like to research. You can enter that here. But let's go back to this keyword. So this can be really useful, but only if you know how to use it. So it's kind of like the subject area, but you, when we looked at the subject area, you can see that there are um, limitations to the vocabulary that you're allowed to use for that. So if you are struggling to find something that matches, um, say oh, you saw maybe the drop down menu, I clicked on this, we're looking for a truck uh, for our, um, our furniture delivery for people of low income. But I don't really know how to really say that in the subject area that I'm looking for a truck. I mean, I can type in truck, but nothing's going to come up. 
you can see track and field is the closest thing that we'll get. So what you can use the keyword search for is to type truck there, and it will look for any grants that have used that word or it's on the list in the foundation profile. So anywhere that it can find the word truck, it will search. So let's do that real quick. So you can see then that just I'd even specify a location and there are 643 grant makers that might align with the word truck. Now if I had spelled it differently, I had an S on it, that is going to impact how you do a keyword search. But it's really there kind of out of out of desperation when you really can't find a subject area that's, that's helping you locate the grants that you're looking for. Overall, there's a lot of information on here and you can take a really deep dive into this information. Um, and I'm happy to schedule one-on-one -on -one appointments and really spend time with people showing them how to best use this information. But this tutorial is really just to help you get started and to understand all of the features on here. So if you'd like to learn more or set up an appointment, please feel free to do so. You can do that by um, this contact information here. Again, my name is Zachary Huber, the Grant Specialist at the Toledo Lucas County Public Library and I hope you have great luck in searching for your grants.